is up, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Akasun. I just got home like a little, little while ago. I had to cancel a date for this shit. She wanted a drink and uh, go out and uh, eat some of my meat and uh, eat, uh, eat uh, some meat. And I was like, no, bitch. It's Justice League time. Right? So. Anyways, let's go ahead and go through all the news. I'm checking my Twitter out right now as we cover this. Um, I already saw, I, I <laughs> oh shit, it's coming in hard right now. Wick uh, just messaged me. Let's first and foremost just take a look at this logo. What do we have here? This is the official Justice League logo. I just saw it a little while ago. Um, I saw that DC Sun also posted something as well. where. For some reason, he highlighted the IC, or whatever logo he had, he uh, he highlighted the IC and the um, uh, G, the G, the L and the G, and I was like, what are, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to make this like Green Lantern? Are you trying to, I, I couldn't exactly figure out what he was trying to do. I'm trying to pull it up for you guys right now. What I think about it, um, I like it. I, li I like what they're doing with it. Um, it's very, it's, it reminds me, it really does just remind me of the original, um, the Justice League Unlimited and uh, Justice League an an animation. It's got the old school appeal to it, it has a star, everything. Here's what, I don't know why I have this one for some reason. You guys, can you guys make anything out of this? It was, do you think it was fan made? There's not much information about this, but it's just that, Justice League, I see, I don't get it fully, myself. Um, I have no idea what that's all about. Very weird. DC Sun, explain it to me. Come over to the studio right now. Let's go through some of these articles as they're just coming in now live here. Uh, there's a video you can you guys can check out from Joe Blow. Go to that if you want to see all the coverage. Uh, I'm not going to play it right now. It's five minutes. Five minutes. All right, everything they're going to say. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's Chris Bumbray here, live Ooh. from London for JoeBlow.com, where I just visited the set of Justice League. Now, what has director Zack Snyder, Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, and Henry Cavill got in store for us? Watch and find out. I can't blow it up at all. Weird. Alright, it's five minutes, five minutes. Right, should we watch it? I don't know. Nah, I don't want to... Uh, maybe. It's okay, let's just do it ourselves. Let's, let's be quicker here. Let's just read the articles. Now, uh, I warn you guys, there will be some uh, spoilers going on here. So if you don't want to. Here's the first one that intrigued me, though. <laughs> Wick says, now DC wants to go with this route. I hope DC fans hate on the movie just as much as they hate on, on Marvel for humor. Because this is in regards to Ben Affleck promises more humor and fun in Justice League. That is quite funny. What up, Andre, you fuck? Yeah, I wonder uh, what he has to say about this now. I, I can't wait for his enthusiastic article talking about everything DC just dropped, minus this little part about uh, more humor and fun, like uh, what Marvel gets shit on all the time for. But I am curious about this. One of the biggest criticisms surrounding Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice was that the film wasn't fun. The studios and filmmakers look to have listened to all of the cri critic and fan complaints as they dive into production on Justice League as they sent a clear message inviting members of the press to the film's London set, Justice League will be fun. <laughs> Hold on. I got my opinion about that, but, okay. Um, first, the studio showed off productions of J.K. Simmons' first day on set as Jim Garden, which concluded with a witty and well-delivered line from, I don't even, Mr. Miller, <coughs> Barry Allen, for a bit of comic relief. Comedic relief. I'm choking on some nuts. <laughs> Peanuts. I'm not even joking. At the end of the day, Though a clip from the first act was shown off as an, an exchange between Barry and Bruce made even the toughest critics, critics in attendance smile. Batman himself, Ben Affleck, is ready for more fun film and he opened up about it while wearing his all new bat suit standing beside the set of Gotham City Police Department's rooftop. 
Interesting. Wait, did he actually talk to the press in his suit? That would have been funny. I'm actually curious about the Arkham's, I mean, the Batman suit. I hope they scrap the Miller design and give him, um, I saw a really good fan done one of, uh, uh, where it was the, it was the kind of the Batman BVS suit, but just armored up a little more. I'm just, sorry guys, like for me, I just, I don't like that like spandex kind of sort of feel. I like, I think that was the one thing they did really well um, with all the, with the new, newer Batman movies was just made them armored the fuck up. I don't, I, I I'm not feeling this so much, so much, this, this look here, but, um, I'll be, uh, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see how it looks. Um, there's definitely room for more humor, Affleck says. DC movies are, I think by their nature, still a little bit more gothic, yes, and more mythic rather than some of the comic book movies are. But that movie was a heavy, dark movie. <laughs> it was really rooted in Dark Knight Returns, which is a heavy, dark book. This is not that. This is a step in evolution from that about bringing together all these characters who had had their origins and it's not about multilateralism and it's about hope. All right. All right, Ben, you fucking tell him. All right. This is like him saying, AKA, it's not a, as much of a Zack Snyder film anymore. A hard Miller film. Good, good. It's about working together and the kind of conflicts you have trying to work together with others. It's a world with all these other superheroes that exist. Okay, okay, Ben. Fucking Ben needs to speak for these movies a lot more. Affleck went on to explain where Justice League humor comes from, which was also made clear in the aforementioned scenes. <laughs> People are like, I guess I can't read. There's a comedy that goes in that's necessary, trying to work with other people and people trying to accomplish goals together is the root of all great comedy in my view. So there's definitely, hopefully, some fun in it. But it's recognizably these characters and these stories, okay? The actor and executive producer says before con concluding, it's not turning it upside down. Ha! That's interesting though, because from what I'm seeing on Twitter, because of this, people are like, dude, they're doing a fucking 180. But I kind of like the idea. Affleck? Affleck can handle the press pretty damn well, actually. He's earning that executive producer title. Perhaps more promising than Affleck's words was his genuine energy and enthusiasm while describing the changes coming to the DC films. The actor's disappointment in Batman v Superman went viral during the film's press tour. <laughs> but, but it's clear that he believes Justice League it believes in Justice League and has not at all been discouraged by the negativity surrounding his re-entry to comic book movies. Okay, all right. Mr. Affleck doing the damn thing here. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Let me know on that one. Let me see if there's anything else uh, worth reading for you guys, because um, that was actually really cool. Somebody said, ha ha ha, fail. Um, I heard, I read a little bit about this, about the uh, scenes with uh, Commissioner Gordon and all that. I'm not gonna read that off to you if you're interested. I think that's very spoilerish type stuff. So I feel that if uh, you're interested in that, you can definitely find that sort of information out there. Um, Dan Slott, I agrees with it. Um, what's going on, that um, Mr. Miller's Flash is gonna be the best thing about Justice League. I'm cool. Uh, Bruce Wayne, it says that Bruce Wayne is gonna build tech for uh, um, the other Justice League members. Makes sense. Uh, I mean, I can't. Dude's got the money. I mean, you're gonna, obviously people are gonna say that. It's like very Iron Man-ish, but you know, they're both fucking billionaires, so. Um, but I do, um, I, I, there was, I did think there was an interesting comparison in the fact that both of them, Iron Man and Batman, are kind of the ones assembling the team. Uh, you know, we saw it a little bit of it in Hulk, Incredible Hulk, and um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
But we also, is that Tony Stark was trying to put the team together as well as Nick Fury. But, I mean, how, you can't, I mean, you just can't go, you can't diverge so far from this situation. And, you know, if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, the Avengers assembled I don't know about the original original one but uh, for example that when the new Avengers assemble and uh, actually no I think I remember there was a cause and everybody just sort of showed up at the same time and they ended up becoming the team uh, so it's a little bit different than assembling the team that is very interesting the Avengers initiative but then they actually just sort of kind of came together on their own in a sense but they needed the push all right uh, let's take a look here. This is a one with Bruce Wayne. During a recent visit to the set of Justice League, a small group of reporters had the opportunity to get a look at costumes for The Flash, Aquaman, and other characters in the DC team-up movie. One thing that stuck right out was a Wayne Tech logo on the costume for The Flash. Hmm. I don't know about that. Who, of course, appeared to Bruce Wayne in a vision in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Obviously, Wayne has certain resources, and he and Alfred have certain abilities, so they're working on a lot of things to help the team as they come together, said the costume designer Michael Wilkinson, indicating that he would leave commenting on the story ramifications. That he would leave, yeah, commenting on the story ramifications of that to producers. I get it. Of course, executive producer Deborah Snyder hadn't even noticed that little detail until a reporter pointed it out. It's safe to say that I think Alfred and Bruce are developing a lot of tech that helps them all. And I think you'll see a lot more of that, Snyder said. She declined to point out any other potential help for individual leaguers, but Batman does have new vehicles, including a small vehicle called a crawler and a huge Justice League transport called the Flying Fox. Interesting. All right. All right. And it comes out November 17th, 2017. Interesting. The 25th anniversary of the release of Superman 75. Really? The best-selling finale to Doomsday, The Death of Superman. No shit! The same day. I also read that uh, Clark Kent, or Bruce, uh, or uh, uh, Superman is going to have longer hair this time around, rocking Rebirth like that the rebirth uh this is another another one here i thought was really uh, interesting justice league will be more inclusive <laughs> this is getting out of hand Akasa. <laughs> justice league where the fuck did that go uh justice league will be more inclusive for a younger audience huh what up andre fuck uh <laughs> this shit they're basically going to copy Marvel. Let's see. Let's see what this one's all about. <laughs> Following more than two years of internet rage about Man of Steel and the pillaring Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice took from critics, producers told ComicBook.com and other press during a recent visit to the set of Justice League that the next step in the evolution of the DC Extended Universe is going to be much friendlier to younger audience members. Yay. Mainstream superhero comics have seen their audience age significantly since the 70s and 80s, but there's still a sense that particularly where Superman and Wonder Woman are involved, the big budget film adaptions should be fairly kid friendly. A reporter asked about whether that might be the case with Justice League after the brutal, political, and complex Batman v Superman turned so many audience members with children away. I think that Justice League is a much more inclusive than Batman v Superman, said executive producer Deborah Snyder. It's all about the characters, too. We have these two very young Flash and Cyborg characters, and they're definitely lighter. I think that they're going to appeal to a younger audience. I think Suicide Squad has its own audience. You goddamn right. Please do not keep Suicide Squad that tone. It looks so fucking good. It's, oh, God, that movie has to come out like now. Has its own audience, and I think Wonder Woman has its own audience. Not just women, because I think the movie, I've seen a little of it. What? Scroll! What happened to my scrolly thing? 
Huh? What's wrong with you? It's broke. What the fuck? Uh, now I'm looking at titties. What the hell? Oh my god. Now I'm looking at women without titties. Alright, I, I give up. I don't know what's going on. This shit is broke. Okay. Anyways, we're done. Um, the thing I was going to tell you guys about was uh, Batman, uh, the... Uh, yeah, we're done with that shit. But the thing I was going to tell you here is the fact that uh, this critique that a Justice League... I mean, Batman v Superman was too dark. Um, I don't, I don't think it was too dark, but I think it was very similar to Man of Steel. Just a lack of hope, a lack of someone to get behind. I think that was the real issue from the way I interpreted it, Batman v Superman, and the reason why it, uh, of many reasons. But when I really reflect upon it, like, I just, I didn't have anybody to get behind. And I, I you know, this is kind of similar to what I said about Jon Snow. Um, is I just, or even watching Game of Thrones, like, I watch Game of Thrones because it's still damn good. But I don't really have anybody to, like, believe in anymore because everybody's kind of just fucked. And I think for me, that was kind of the turnoff with Batman v Superman is like none of these heroes actually seem like they wanted to be heroes um, Superman was not Superman at all like just moping around all the time and didn't seem like he was really that interested in helping people so much because um, I've never seen a Superman like just get that sensitive about what people thought about him and, and uh, to be fair in the beginning he didn't but I don't know, it's just, it was just moping all the time and shit. Batman was fucking psycho. Um, a murderous psychopath. <laughs> like, nobody had, like, it, uh, that Wonder Woman was kind of retired, kind of. Came out of exile to, like, <laughs> to get a picture from exile. It was just, nobody seemed like they wanted to actually be heroes. And even toward the end, the redemption of all of them which you know if it maybe was directed a better way or paced a better way the sort of redemption of all of them superman mm, which dying for is dying for somebody um it just didn't it didn't pan out the right way where you're just like yeah i believe in heroes again right but i don't think it was too i guess in that aspect yeah it was too dark but I felt like they still could have had that feeling, but still, they. I don't know, I personally don't know if this is the kind of tone if they need to, in a sense, what I'm kind of seeing is that they're going to try to Amazing Spider-Man it, in a sense, um, what, and what I mean by that is that if you remember the first Amazing Spider-Man, was really kind of heavy, dark tone, like a little maybe too much, right? And then they tried to clean it up a bit later. Um, for the sequel and make it a little more lighter, change the costume up. I think that, I'm assuming that's where we're going to go in that particular sense. Do you guys feel me on that? I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Let me just see if there's anything else that really stands out, but um, I'm pretty much, that's what it is. Everybody, the world saying they, I hope they corrected their mistakes from BVS. It looks good. Let's see how this what this was a bad decision, Akasan. Um Ah Nah, you know, this one is actually from Colossus. Uh Huh. About I heard about this with Colossus and such and people were asking. I did get a call for Colossus, but it was a CG stunt and not using my voice, so I graciously passed. Uh, yeah, I heard about this one, like the original Colossus and such, so, yeah, as an actor. Yeah, so, and, but I see, like, a lot of people are really psyched about The Flash. I hope that works, but I just hope they, I hope, I just hope it's done. I just hope it's done correctly. Yeah. Red Dread Nation, stand up, speak up. Sorry for the long video, but I definitely wanted to get my initial thoughts out on all of this. Let me know what you guys think about all this. And uh, I'm curious, am I bleeding right here? No, that's just the shadow, right?
What the fuck is that? Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> that shit scared the hell out of me. I thought, like, I was bleeding or something, but it's just... Okay. Sorry. You know how we do. On our way here to 100,000 subscribers very, very soon. I got a collaboration with some comic book people I think you're really gonna know. There you go. Lighting's better. I'm out, guys. Let me know what you think about all of this. Peace. Shame. Shame. Please do the shame. Oh, no. That cannot happen. That will not happen. Is that Randy Orton? <laughs>